Um, this, this system is a no-brainer. It's fail-safe. Just do it the way they sell it to you. Don't fool around changing it. The nickel metal hydrides, it's a little different story because there's no circuit board that's in these. So you're, re you're, re you're responsible to find the right charger, okay, in order to get the best life uh, out of these batteries. And there's plenty of chargers, so this is not a complicated thing. Um, so with the nickel metal hydride, you have a variety of chargers you can choose from, and they have different times. Uh, as John was saying, it takes about four hours to charge this, all right, because it's a matched system. All right, don't go any faster, it'll ruin the battery. All right, you can't because of that circuit board, but you don't go any faster, okay? So as I was saying earlier, this is a four amp battery, so it's charged at half of that at about two amps. Well, those of us who have been doing this a long time, we charge them even slower than that because we want to get five years out of these batteries. There is no advantage to heating these things up to the point where you can't touch them. It doesn't, it's not a good charge. Bob. Just as a rule of thumb, and I don't care which kind of battery you're using, most of them get warm as they start to run down. I let them cool off before I put them on the charger. Same way when they're finished charging, I make sure they're cool before I start using them. All right, that's a, that's a good point because don't be afraid that, uh oh, the battery's going to blow up or something like that because it's getting warm. There's a difference between hot. <laughs> and warm. Hot to touch, something's not good. All right. Warm is normal. All right. Now, just like with this charge, the charger that goes to this, it stops the charging process. <coughs> A smart charger for nickel metal stops the charging process. It goes into what we call trickle charge, and and you called it a, a float charge. Um, so these chargers, the better chargers, all right, do that. If you invest in a good charger, it's going to last forever. Yes, sir. And your chargers do more than one battery at a time. So if I had three engines on three ready tracks, could I have three leads from your one charger to the three batteries, and it would recognize as the batteries are coming up the full charge? Ah, that's a great question. Let me repeat this question. This is really a good question. All right. Can I charge more than one engine at a time? All right. Now, unless somebody wants to technically correct me, the answer is no. All right. Um, the, the smart charger, the way it's been explained to me, all right, senses stuff. And when you have more than one pack on there, because we're changing the electrical characteristics, the voltage, the current, uh, it has a tough time. And what happens is some of the packs won't charge. And it's always like one charge is better than the other two or something. So I've always said, don't do it, um, because you just won't get good results. And I don't know of any charger manufacturer who promotes multiple sell uh, multiple packs. I don't know anybody really doing that. If somebody does make a multiple charge station, basically it's three charges. There you go. That would be the way to do it. Yeah. There we go. Veritrex has like a twin charger. Okay. All right. So they make twin chargers out there. Um, the good news is some of the chargers are anywhere from $35 to $80, and maybe you can afford a couple of chargers. Uh, those of us who've been doing it a while have multiple chargers. <laughs> Believe me, we have a we have a rack, <laughs> you know, and and the building is humming and <laughs> to keep things going. So, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> you can buy one of these super expensive chargers, and if it's the kind you buy, what battery you want? Sooner or later, you're gonna buy the wrong battery. And that's up. Good point. <laughs> One advantage of that little uh, uh, Risto lithium ion battery, charge is only about 20 bucks. You can buy several of those. Absolutely. So that, that's what you want to look for. That's, that's really, really good advice. We've all used these $150 to $200 chargers. And, and you get the phone call and like, gee, how come the battery's melted inside the tender and it warped it? Well, what did you choose to charge it on? Oh, I didn't realize, you know. And I mean, you know, that's an expensive repair. Yes, sir. I've heard that you can know, all of these types of batteries it takes four or five charge discharge cycles to get maximum output. Ah, uh, yes. Bill had another great question. Okay. Um, now, correct. You guys correct me on on the lithium. 
But on the nickel metal, the manufacturer recommends three charge cycles before the batteries are fully conditioned. All right, this is chemistry, is what, what's going on in here. It's all chemistry. So when you get a brand new nickel metal hydride battery, and I said that, well, it should run four hours and it stops in 20 minutes, all right, well, let's hope there's not a problem with it, but give it a ch charge again. You'll notice the charge cycle takes longer, and you'll notice it'll go an hour, and then you charge it again. So it usually takes three charges. What's been your experience with lithium? Okay. And maybe it takes a third cycle. Okay. But like you say, nightcaps are that way, nickel metal hydrides are that way, and these are maybe a little less, but about two charges, and then you should it should give you this max. Okay, well, that's good. So that, that's a real good question because uh, so you you get, get just so you know that that's that's part of all this that you're going to have to do a couple of charge cycles and then you'll get some great uh, run times. Bob. Uh, just one word of warning about this little inexpensive Aristo charger. <laughs> it's got a true idiot light on it. It lights up green. It doesn't care. If you plug it into a 100 can, it lights up. You don't plug any battery. If you plug it into the battery, don't plug it into a 100 can. It lights up. It always lights up. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, that figure <laughs> Now, now you're getting a little extra stuff that, uh, actually, I forgot, I'm sorry, you, you had a, your hand up. Uh, oh, I was just going to comment <laughs> Okay. multiple recharges on these batteries, it's not going to just die at the end of 150 charges. What's going to happen is the battery is going to just slowly fail to hold its charge for a long period of time. It's going to start producing itself, producing it to where you might have got four hours run time, you know, get to the point where you're only like an hour and a half or something. That's when you know it's That's it. Time. Absolutely. Collaborate on that too. So with the gel cells, <laughs> as they run down, your engine can just start slowing down, slowing down. With That's true. that lithium ion and the circuit in there, when it gets to a certain level, it just quits. That's true. That's right. One thing, but I don't forget. All right. The battery that you have for the shade there? Yeah. It's the, the triangles. Okay. Either one of them. Mm hmm. What kind of running time are you looking at, and how many volts, 